This Mackinac Moment is sponsored by Comcast Business. Please welcome Director of Arts and Culture for the City of Detroit, Rochelle Riley. Thank you so, so much. Those of you who are staying, those of you who are headed to the bar, save me one. <laughs> so a funny thing happened on the way to the island. My friend Carla Walker Miller and her daughter and I were parked on the side of the road trying to fix something on a Cadillac steering wheel, and we were hit by an 18-wheeler. And my daughter said, are you at the hospital? Have you gone back to Detroit? I said, no, I'm opening for the mayor at the Mackinac Policy Conference. <laughs> So we're here, we're safe, the car's totaled, but we're good. And I am here to talk, thank you. And I am here to talk to you about remaking an American city with beauty and art. My office is the Office of Arts, Culture, and Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is on purpose because I work with a creative workforce. These are not people who are doing this for a hobby. Dancers are small businesses. Actors are small businesses. Musicians are small businesses. Every time Mark Cuban said the word entrepreneurship, I got a little tingle because people need to understand that it is business. My office was born in a pandemic. It was all we could do to host telethons for out-of-work musicians and getting people to stay in Detroit because we were one of the hardest-hit cities. But after three years of rising by providing constituents with everything from record affordable housing to opportunities for education and employment, all to repair and improve and make people better, the mayor in his 2022 State of the City introduced Blight to Beauty. It's a campaign to transform public spaces in Detroit by tearing down abandoned structures, creating beautiful streetscapes, and painting art on everything. We are a part of a national mural movement enlisting artists to help change our city from gray to glorious, from granite to Kapayao. Last fall, my office launched the Detroit Mural City Campaign and the Detroit Mural Map. We are documenting every mural in the city, and we want to introduce residents and tourists to those amazing artists who are changing the city. Every mural is placed on a Detroit mural map, and anyone with an iPhone can walk up to any mural where it is and see who painted it and when, or you can look up murals by certain artists and plan a tour. And folks, we're putting murals on everything. We have a blight remediation division that is painting over graffiti across the city, 152 buildings, 258,000 square feet just last year. And its city walls program went back and put beautiful, attractive murals on 125 of those walls. And they're going to do 50 more of those murals in the next year. In 2021, we commissioned the city's first street mural, the Power to the People mural. I'll tell you how it happened. This beautiful group of young people who have a peer trauma healing team said, we want to paint a mural. I said, OK. And they said, well, we want to paint it on a street. I said, well, we've got streets. So. Um, we did an open call for 34 artists. All of the artists but one wanted to paint Black Lives Matter. One, Dr. Hubert Massey, suggested power to the people. And these kids said, we never heard that before. We want to do that one. <laughs> and I said, these youngins, yeah, bring back the 60s. So we painted that. But we're also going to be asking uh, businesses and leaders and folks across the city to honor our past artists who have done amazing work. Uh, like Dr. Massey did when he restored the uh, mural that was done on the side of the Foundation Hotel by the legendary Charles McGee. Yes, it's beautiful. And this really is about life and a way of life and color and making Detroit someplace that is beautiful to live as well as business-like to live. And the real excitement is seeing the whole city get into the picture. So we've got color happening everywhere. We're also using arts and culture, oops, sorry, using arts and culture uh, as catalyst for neighborhood growth and beautification, transforming nine commercial and residential alleys into these beautiful spaces where people can have events, where they can feel safe, where they can do, you know, whatever they want, but there will also be lots of art. Imagine walking out of your backyard and being able to go into a museum. 
someplace that's safe for the kids and for the family. And we also literally are celebrating history. The mayor appointed the first city historian, Jamon Jordan, who works for me. And our first project is we're honoring Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Jefferson. He is a Tuskegee Airman, a POW, who literally was a part of a team, a part of a unit that helped save the world. They were called uh, Red Tails, and they escorted bombers with, and rarely lost a plane. So they overcame hardship and racism to become one of the most celebrated fighter groups of World War II. We are building a plaza and a statue of him at Rouge Park, and that is the place where he flew model airplanes as a boy. We want young boys to see that and know that they can grow up to help save the world, too. We're also continuing to sponsor exhibitions by young artists. Our first one, Young, Gifted, and Woke, was co-sponsored by the DIA. Salvador Sola Pons came, and Jean Gargaro, who's the chairman of the board, came. And Jean bought a painting from a young artist. Mind you, first painting this artist ever sold. He paid him $1,500. Remember, my office is the Office of Arts, Culture, and Entrepreneurship. So I went over to that kid, and I said, he just paid you $1,500. That's your price now. That's what you charge. He nearly fainted, but he's doing great. We are, thank you, <laughs> we are partnering on 21 projects, either leading or partnering 21 beautiful projects across the city of Detroit. And to recap, let me tell you, so this is where we came from, from 2020 to now, when ACE was born in chaos and despair, and we curated the largest arts installation in the city's history, the Belle Isle Memorial, which gave the families of pandemic victims one last look at their loved ones, 15 funeral processions, past 924 billboards of victims. Now, we're working to educate, elevate, and energize our creative workforce by commissioning 150 murals in neighborhoods across the city. It's called Honoring Our Neighborhoods, and it's gonna be the largest arts training program in the city's history. Dr. Massey is gonna teach young artists to create murals, and they're gonna do it um, in a way that makes it clear that it's a job, that you have to know how to find a wall and how to prep a wall, and it's gonna be one of those things that we're creating a new generation of workers. But in addition to that, we're creating a training guide for that initiative that offers artists that step-by-step -step look at how to do that, that we hope will become a national text for programs around the country to do this with young people who want to be muralists. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of Dr. Massey, he's currently completing the largest mural in Michigan, the 1,700-foot Stellantis Wall. It's actually a series of murals. It's gorgeous, and it's going to have the Belle Isle Bridge, Black Bottom, Eastern Market, but it's mostly about how people came from the South up to Detroit to work. And in September, we're partnering with Philadelphia Arts. Now, let me tell you, they've been doing murals for 40 years, but they're calling us to partner. We're going to have the first National Street Art Summit right here in Detroit. And you know why? <laughs> Because USA Today and a panel of judges named us in the top 10 cities in America in creating beautiful murals. I am thrilled by that. We're going to have a lot of plans. We're going to be doing a lot of things. I know a lot of you from when I was a columnist at the Free Press for years and now in this role. So every CEO in Metro Detroit is going to be getting a phone call from me. Don't act like you don't know me because we have some really important things that we want to do, but I will tell you what I told a huge audience at South by Southwest, one of the largest arts festivals in the country when I was there in March and when I was finished. They said, how can we get your mayor? And I said, you cannot. This was the challenge that I issued them. In Detroit, we use our streets, we use our walls, we use our city for art. It gives insight into a city's culture and personality. It turns brick into canvas and mortar into museums. Only three cities in America do murals better than we do. Now we might be number four, but we're aiming for number one. In Detroit, soon you'll be able to use your smartphone in front of any mural and meet the artist who did it. Or you can see the murals without leaving home. Our mural map will show you where all the murals are and let you plan a tour of your favorites. Visit DetroitArtsAndCulture.com. See why Detroit is a leader in street art. And yes, we're that good.
we don't have an opportunity to chat, but I will be on the porch for questions and checks. Thank you so much.